Photoshop comes with a huge amount of effects, many that can be found in the filter gallery. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the colored pencil effect. Key thing for this one is here, green. That's set as the background. You can change the color to maybe white, or blue. And as soon as you do that, you'll notice in the filter gallery, you get a different color in your imagery. So filter and filter gallery. The key thing is it works with the current layer. So here's the current layer selected and you can now see your green. And if I change the color to blue or red, etc., then it will be different. But unfortunately, inside the filter, you can't change it. It would be nice if that feature was available, but unfortunately it's locked at this point. So what you can also do is over this side, you've got all these different settings for colored pencil. You'll notice you've got lots of others. Now the color pencil is found in the artistic. You can expand or close that, but also you've got these settings. So pencil width, you can increase that to the max. Unfortunately, you can't extend it beyond that, so you can't push it beyond 24. 24 is the limit. And you can see the green there, but you can also see the colored pencil strokes here as well. But you've got the green. If you reduce the stroke pressure to zero, then that's what you get. You get the background color. That's what you get. Just the end result, nothing, absolutely nothing. So it's best obviously to have it some sort of value. So I'm just gonna go for the middle setting, stroke pressure of eight. Again, you can't extend it beyond that. So if you push it up to the limit, so let's just push it all the way up to 15, that's it. Very little difference, to be honest. But also you can modify it paper brightness. You can reduce this down and you'll notice then the green, the background color gets reduced. So you can see it becomes slightly darker. And as you go down and down and down, paper back brightness, which is the background color, gets reduced to black. That's what it is, brightness. Obviously black is the zero value. But if you want the green, you can push it up to say 19 and use that. And then once you want to apply the effect, simply click OK and there's the effect. But that's not the end result. Of course, if it was, it'd be a very limited effect. And Photoshop effects often are called one click effects. Personally, I don't think they are. They can be used in multiple ways. So let's just undo it. To undo it, simply go to edit and undo filter gallery and that will remove it. But you also notice you can do this, fade filter gallery. So fade filter gallery, click there. And with that, you've got the opacity. You can reduce it down. So maybe you want just a very subtle effect applied. Now you can see you've got the skin there going through. You can see it, but if you increase it, you can see the Kent colored pencil effect there and color pencil effect there. But again, reduce down, very subtle. Also blend modes, you can go through multiply, some more effective than others. So color burn, get lighten, and you can't see anything there with that. Overlay and so on. So literally all kinds of effects can be applied just by changing the setting using edit and fade. But also you can, if you want, let's just go back. Now with this, if you apply the effect, so filter gallery, apply it like that. You can apply it here, filter gallery very quickly, or just go down here to filter gallery. This just uses the current settings. So if you've got the settings to zero, five, whatever, it will use those as the colored pencil effects. You can repeat it over and over again with this shortcut. But also you can undo. And now what you can do, you can also go here still and go edit and fade filter gallery. And now you can change it again. So you can tweak it either way and go to say darken, etc. but cancel. Also within the filter gallery, you can combine multiple effects. So go to filter and down to filter gallery. And in filter gallery, again, I've got colored pencil, which is here. But at the bottom, there's a little plus, new effect layer. Now you can apply different effects. You don't have to go with this one. You could go with sponge underpainting for this next effect. So just click here. Basically, it defaults to duplicating that effect. But you can then just reduce it down. Now this is independent of this one. So if I don't want it, I can just remove that one. But if I've got both, you've got two effects on top. So you can hear pencil width, you can modify this, change stroke pressure and so on. So paper brightness, something like that. And click OK. So that's two effects applied. 
So you get a very intense green effect like that. But as mentioned, undo, you can always click here and you can change it. So you might say, you know what, I don't want the background color to be green. I want it to be white. So click there, I've got white now as the background. And now I can go to filter and I can use filter gallery. It will now use white instead of, see, it looks gray because of the brightness setting. Undo, filter gallery. You can also go to filter and filter gallery and then modify the different settings. But it's still using white now as the background and not the green. So you can change the stroke, pressure, pencil width and so on to create a different pencil effect like that and click OK. But also once you've got this, of course, you can then combine it with other effects. So filter and maybe go down here to various ones like stylize, maybe go with find edges or oil paint. So oil paint, click OK and you get effect like that. Image and auto tone and that sort of effect. So very quickly from a colored pencil effect, you get a very interesting, unusual design. But you can undo that. Also, another thing you can do is duplicate this layer. So I'll just go over here, you've got dupe, this one selected, go to layer and just down to duplicate. So duplicate layer, we'll use a shortcut of course. Click OK. With this, you can now apply the effect to this. So filter and then filter gallery. This time just use the exact same settings. The more and more of these click in here, more effects layers you add, it will get slightly slower. So you might like to decide, you know what? You can delete it, so you don't want that one. You can just simply delete it there. It's removed, you just got this effect instead. And again, you can tweak these and then click OK. But now you've got it as a layer. You can go up here, change the blend mode, lighten and run through, overlay, something like that. So that combines this with this using overlay. And of course you can modify it at any point later. So this one can still have effects applied to that. So a filter and maybe go for say a blur or Gaussian blur and click OK. So you've got that pe colored pencil effect combined with a blurred effect as well. You can also use the effect as a smart object. So go to layer and then go down to smart objects and convert this current layer to a smart object. So convert it to a smart object. As soon as you've done that, you can go to filter and then down again to filter gallery. And in filter gallery, you can apply all the different settings here, stroke pressure, modify that, again, tweak it as you want. Then click OK. This time it becomes a smart filter. You can see the smart filter here. You can also click here and you can modify the blending as well. So double click that and then go up here and maybe go for darken or go for lighten, overlay, etc. Then click OK. But also at any point, if you decide, you know what, I want to change it, you can go back here, double click, bring up the filter gallery again and then edit the effect. So you might decide the pencil width could be a bit less, stroke pressure, maybe less, paper brightness, a bit less, and then click OK. And you can see, another effect applied then, and so on. So you can tweak it in countless ways. Also, this filter can be used with channels as well. So window and go to channels. So in channels, I'm not gonna use smart objects. So let's just go back. So I'm just gonna remove this and go back to the default image. So with this, you can see I've got R, G and B, red, green and blue. But you can also apply the colored pencil effect with channels. So here with channels, you can find that in the window menu. You can go to then just click on the red. So in the red, you can now go to filter and then down to filter gallery. It's still available in this color channel. So this time I'm gonna go for pencil width. So I put that up to 22, maybe change the stroke pressure a bit, just go to paper brightness. You can vary of course in countless ways. Click okay. And you can see now the effect is applied only to the red channel, but also then go to the green channel. So let's go there, just click that, make certain the green channel is selected and you can see the eye is set there. Now go to filter and again, filter gallery. And here you can go and change the stroke pressure, maybe push that up, pencil width reduced, pencil paper brightness there, increased and click okay. And now that's applied to the green, but maybe you said the blue one, is that selected? 
you can go over here, maybe say, you know what, I want to change it. So go for, say, green or maybe darker, something like that. So much darker. And then go to filter and again, filter gallery. And here you can just change the stroke pressure again, paper brightness, maybe pencil width, click OK. And now, once you've done that, you can go back to RGB to simply click here. And you've got that effect. Effect you probably will not be able to achieve just by using RGB. You can now use red, green, and blue. Also, what you can do, you can use selections. So let's just go over here and go to duplicate again. So layer, and then down to duplicate. So duplicate layer, click OK. Then go to filter, and then filter gallery. And now apply the filter gallery with this design. Click OK. Doesn't particularly matter the color. I'm just going with a dark green. But once you've got this, what you can do, you can go to select, and then go down here and color range. So select and color range, and then maybe go there. I'm going to just go for this part. So the pink flesh there, and click OK. Now you can see your selection. Go to edit, and then copy, and then edit and paste. That will create a new layer. Now I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to remove that. So now what I've got is this effect here. Because it's on a layer, also there's some transparency involved as well. So I can go down here to Effects, just click here, go to Bevel Emboss. And with that, I can then use Bevel Emboss settings here. I can just change the depth. I'm using Boss and Smooth. And then click OK. Of course, you can use other ones as well. Grain overlay, color overlay, etc. But click OK. And now, instead of just a basic image, you've now got some texture to it created using that effect. So it's a great source also for textures as well within Photoshop. Colored pencil can be used in countless ways. I hope you found this video of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Also a like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.